Well, I picked up the mail today and found a couple cool catalogs to go through, so I figured I'd turn the camera on. In case I find something interesting, we could talk about it, maybe get your opinion on it. Bud K, which uh, most people know. God, I've been looking at uh, Bud K catalogs since uh, I was probably 12 or 13 years old. I mean, for a 13-year-old boy, it, you know, you want everything in here. From cool weapons, to camp gear, to uh, silly, stupid stuff, <laughs> to, of course, knives, fake guns. I mean, just pretty much everything a teenage boy would want. So I've been looking at that forever. Um, CH Cadells is kind of new to me. All of a sudden started receiving this, never really signed up for it. And then I very soon realized it's the same thing as Bud K. It's the same thing. But if you look at the back here, let's look at the address for CH Cadells. All right. oh, that looks familiar. Let's look at the Bud K address. And we know it's the same friggin' company. So, yeah, I guess, I don't know. Maybe you just make another company up and uh, make it seem like it's your competitor. And uh, we're going to look through. And I, actually, I never did this before. But I want to, uh, if I find something similar in here, well, it's mostly the same the same stuff. I mean, really. We could find doubles, and I'm going to see if the price is the same, because I never actually checked that. So we'll do that real quick. But anyway, I wanted to just kind of flip through and uh, and talk about whatever I find. This is what I normally do anyway. So if you could turn the camera on, and you guys can join me and give me your opinion as well. So first off, let's look at uh, the CH Cadells. All right, right on the front there, Christmas is on the way. They got the tactical stocking. I remember when I first got the tactical stocking, I got a lot of people asking me where they can get them. And I think at the time I didn't know a good source for them. But hey, they got them here for 10 bucks. So if you want to get tactical this Christmas, it's very cool. It even has a drag handle in case it gets nice and heavy with goodies. <laughs> but it's pretty cool, I have to say. So let's get right into it. Uh, I'm not going to talk about everything, I'm just going to kind of flip through and give my opinions on stuff. Uh, I did talk about this before in the past. These are the flare gun inserts, so you can shoot, you know, different types of rounds in your uh, flare guns. It's not your, not every flare gun though. It's 26 and a half millimeter flare guns, very specific. So don't just, you know, go and run to Walmart and grab a, a flare gun and hope this works. Um, so we have a 45 long Colt slash 410 insert and a 12 gauge insert. Very interesting. Um, we got some shotgun scabbards here. I actually recently got a, a shotgun scabbard. You guys didn't see it yet, but I'm playing around with it a little bit here. There's more inserts for flare guns. 22 long rifle, and 38 special. Survival tabs. I actually recently saw Hashinasi <laughs> try to live on uh, survival tabs. You can check out his channel and see how that worked out. Um, these are good. I always pick up these for, for all the rifles and, and for shotguns. It just I'm going to shoot. I don't leave them on there. I slip them off, but sometimes when I'm, uh, you know, practice shooting, uh, it's just good to have. It's convenient. And you can find these at uh, Kmart. They have them cheap, like five bucks on sale all the time. What is this? Pistol to rifle conversion kit. That looks pretty dumb. <laughs> Let's see. They have a they have a Glock here. It says the AMG pistol to rifle conversion kit will convert your Glock pistol to a 16 inch carbine rifle. The conversion kit includes everything you need, improves accuracy up to 70%, clock pistol not included. Um, hmm, includes barrel, stock, guide rod, and collar. No NFA stamp required. No, uh, no tax stamp, huh? Why? That's, I don't know. I, I think it's illegal to put a foregrip, because I actually had a foregrip on my Glock when I first got it way back in the day. Um, so I can hold it with two hands and, and really, you know, crank out the rounds. And someone told me that was, actually a bunch of people said, hey, that's illegal. You can't put a, a foregrip on a pistol. You can't put a foregrip on a pistol without paying a tax stamp. Like, how can you do this? I mean, yeah, I guess you can make the barrel as long as possible. And you can't really grab the barrel anywhere. But how's the, uh, the stock work in shouldering it? You know, I don't know. I don't know. Sometimes the law gets a little fuzzy. So the, uh, the gun guys know a little bit more about the legality side of things. Let me know. Is that really uh, okay to, to shoot? Can you shoulder this? Just because they're selling it like this, they're not saying you can't shoulder it. You know, I know it's a big uh, issue with the, the SIG brace and, and so forth. So I don't know. I'd like some more information about that. But 300 bucks, damn. That's a lot. Um, I have seen Glock conversion carbine things before that look way better than this. They're basically like uh, AR uppers, essentially. And then you put your Glock lower, you know, the lower portion of your uh, your pistol into it and of course it accepts Glock mags that's pretty cool I've seen that before I forget what the prices on that but it definitely look cooler than how that looks 
but looks aren't everything. Sometimes it's just all about function. These uh, tabs are awesome. I did a video on these a long time ago. They're like real compressed little towels. They're great to throw in uh, uh, tackle boxes. You know, when they get wet, they expand, and then you can unroll them, and you have like a nice, you know, durable cloth to uh, to clean yourself up. Wow, portable urines. That's uh, that's interesting. You know, not a bad thing to keep under your seat in your car. If you are a man and you have male parts, at some point in your lifetime, you've pissed in a Gatorade bottle inside of a car because you just couldn't hold it and whoever you're with weren't stopping. Um, so <laughs> it's not really such a bad idea to keep that, uh, you know, underneath the uh, car seat or something for those emergencies. Um, what else? Also, you know, if you're a prepper, this is a good tool to have. The uh, battery-operated pump, you know, for gas. You can use it for anything, but you know, specifically ones that are rated for gasoline. So it's good to have. You know, in the post-apocalypse, uh, when you're stealing everyone's gas from their, their dead cars. <laughs> um, hmm. Interesting stuff. I actually saw this. I think it was, uh, I want to say Alton Brown. Alton Brown, I think, tested that out. I think I saw a YouTube video, and he said it was just total junk. Did not work. It was Bear Claw Shredders. Now, they're selling it here. I mean, let's see what the, how they advertise it. Just says Bear... Bear paws, meat shredders, dishwasher safe, nylon, heat resistant. I guess they're just selling it as its intended use, but considering the whole theme here, it, it, um, my assumption is that they're selling it kind of as a weapon, even though they're not saying it's a weapon. I mean, everything in here is like weapon related. So they're kind of like, yeah, this is for shredding your pork apart for your pulled pork sandwiches, but you go ahead and jab someone with it if you need to. <laughs> Interesting. I just got this. I just got this. I love this. This is the uh, K-Bar ice scraper. All right. You can see they're selling for six bucks. Um, I can't wait to use it because uh, I don't have a good ice scraper. Um, so we'll see. Uh, I'll do a demo, of course, once snow and ice and stuff hits this year. But I have this uh, in the wings waiting for the winter. Of course, Boker Kalishnikov. Lots of different uh, designs on that. It's a good knife. I am a fan. <laughs> Nothing too interesting to talk about here. Oh, I have this. This actually works really well. It's a great uh, folding grill. Selling it for $29. Hmm. I got that one. In, that was one of the uh, Battle Box items. Actually, so is this. That was a Battle Box item too. A seed vault. A bunch of seeds. Heirloom stuff. <laughs> Tool of ammo. Slingshot. Interesting. This is it a folder? A folder that looks like the, uh, the K-Bar fixed blade. MREs. If you guys never had MREs, they're, they're sold everywhere now. Actually, something else. This uh, survival ammo can. I bought two of these with the intention of burying a gun and some money. And maybe some silver. I never did. I just never did. I don't know what I'm going to do with these. I got My second one I got specifically for my family, uh, for my niece, when she gets a little bit older, to do a um, like a time capsule. I thought that'd be fun for her. Um, but I just, I never used them yet. It kind of reminded me that I have these in the closet somewhere. Huh, interesting, we'll have to see where that goes. <laughs> but uh, yeah, that's so funny. I, I literally forgot I had that until I just saw it again. These are actually really good, if you've ever seen these before. This, this whole piece here that looks silver, it wedges down and has that screeching, high-pitched noise. This is a really, really good, effective alarm, okay? Uh, whatever purpose you may use it for, let's say just for, you know, just for your regular home protection, you can put it on your front door or whatever main entrance you have. You just put it right by the door, and obviously the door opens, it, it wedges and pushes this down, the alarm goes off, scares everyone, wakes everyone up. Very, very good item to have, specifically if you don't have dogs. Um, one reason why a lot of people love having the dogs, it's not just companionship, but it's security. A house with a dog in it, most breeds anyway, is the best alarm clock, or alarm clock, be the best uh, house alarm you will ever have. Because when your dog starts barking, it, it alerts you to things. Very cool option. So let's see what's going on here. These actually work very well. I've uh, had experience with those. Bolt cutters. All-purpose brush. <laughs> Come on now. All-purpose brush. That right there is a shaving brush. Okay, as anyone who 
likes to shave traditionally knows. Clearly a shaving brush, but I like how they're showing it with a with a gun. Like you use that to clean your gun out. Let's see, this all-purpose brush can be used for a variety of tasks from gun cleaning to shaving. Yep, shaving for sure. It has a genuine two-inch bore bristles and a heavy plastic handle. Is easy to grip. All right. Yeah, just a different way to advertise it, but we, you know, clearly a shaving brush. It's just funny they're showing it. You can use it to clean your guns, too. I never really thought of using my shaving brush to clean my guns. I don't think I'd want to, unless I had a dedicated uh, one just for that task. But still kind of funny. Stainless straws. All of a sudden, I'm, I'm seeing these everywhere for sale. Must be a new fad. Stainless straws. I'm telling you. I'm, I'm noticing them popping up everywhere. What else do we have here? Interesting uh, key knife, Punisher style. I like the, uh, the SOG. They're a uh, folding key shaped knife. Very cool, very cool. Some batons, some paracord, survival food. Mm -hmm -hmm. Lock picking set. Lock picking sets are a lot of fun to play around with. Seriously, you just get some cheap locks in the store and just have at it. Tons and tons of videos on uh, YouTube. There's a whole community of uh, lock pickers on YouTube that can really teach you a lot. So if you ever want to get into that hobby, you can get the uh, the sets fairly cheap, and uh, you can learn a lot. Hmm. Ooh, all kinds of traps. That's cool. Animal traps for emergencies, of course, or unless you hunt. I actually have a couple different traps, but not because I hunt, but. You know, society breaks down. You gotta eat, right? <laughs> Kevlar cut resistant gloves. Interesting. I'm gonna do another video on the uh, the cut resistant gloves that I, I have. I did the one video and I showed you guys uh, that they actually work. They work really well. However, um, I had a bunch of comments of people requesting to see me try it with uh, a serrated blade. So that's exactly what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna do another part or another version of that with uh, serrated blades all right huh. this looks interesting fastest way to pick up your spent brass the weasel nut gatherer so you just uh just you roll that around the ground and it's supposed to squeeze the cases squeeze in between oh that'd be actually that'd be really really good when i'm shooting um, most of the time that I'm shooting, I'm shooting on private property. I pick up all the brass because it's literally just like a lawn. And, uh, you know, you can't cut the, cut, mow the lawn with a bunch of brass shells around. They'd be flying everywhere, plus they dull the blades on the, the lawnmower. Uh, what I've been doing, which actually works really well, is putting out two tarps. And I know the pattern of it, you know, generally where, where it's throwing the brass. So, like, let's say this whole you know sheet of paper here is the tarp I'll stand up here because I know they're throwing behind me into the right and you know 99% of the brass is landing on the tarp when I'm all done you know I kind of lift the tarp up get them all centered and it's really really easy to pick them up that way but it's still a hassle to you know bring the tarp down where I'm shooting and open it up and you know so something like this would seem pretty cool I don't know how that how well that works on grass compared to dirt or concrete or what if you guys ever tried picking up brass this way Definitely let me know. All right, very, very interesting. This is very cool. I know there's so many guys that go to the, the gun range just to get brass to do reloading. So I'm sure you guys have tried this or seen this or, or heard people's experience with it. Let me know if that thing works. It seems really interesting. Also, before I turn the page, these uh, dental tool kits, very, very handy for gun cleaning. Okay. Not to mention, it's just good to have a, a set like that anyway for dental purposes. All right. Better than a toothpick. Plus, if you have some kind of uh, pain or something in your mouth, you can really use the, the mirror in there. It doesn't fog up uh, to see what's going on. So those, I highly recommend those dental kits. They actually have a cheap plastic one at Walmart. And dash cams. Dash cams are a good thing to have these days. You never know what you're going to see on the road. Not to mention for insurance purposes. If someone else is at fault and you got footage of it, well, that'd be a good thing. In fact, uh, speaking of... Uh, dash cams or, or something like a dash cam pretty much every guy I see on a motorcycle not like a Harley style motorcycle but I mean like a cross rocket you know anything any any uh, you know road bike like that every single person I see they always have some kind of GoPro going on 
um, either just to, to capture, you know, their ride itself, which is pretty cool. You know, I, I get that. If you're riding like that, you would certainly want to film it. Um, but besides that, again, so, so you can see what's going on the road and God forbid you get into an accident and you survive it because most of the guys who ride those bikes go pretty damn fast. They're whizzing past me at like 120. So I don't think they're going to survive most of those uh, crashes. But if you do, hey, at least you got a, uh, you know, proof of what happened. And of course, if uh, you were not at fault, you'd want to have that. But big gripe, um, not all, but a lot of those guys, they're weaving in between the cars. Not cool. Totally not cool. Pisses me off every time. Nothing I could do about it. I ain't going to chase someone down on a bike. Uh, it's just too dangerous for them. Not for me, but for them. Well, I guess it is dangerous for me too. Shouldn't have road rage at all. And I've actually been really good about that. That's my, my wife for sure. She uh, definitely grounds me when I'm in the car, so I don't I don't have any road rage anymore like I used to. But uh, oh look, the can cooker. I got these can cookers, both of them, and I absolutely love them. So I will probably talk about that in the future. There are a bunch of videos on YouTube, people uh, cooking in these things, but they work really really well. So stay tuned for that. That'll be a future uh, video. I'm also a huge fan. Speaking of road rage, geez, I'm a huge fan of these things, these Caltrops. Any way they drop, they always have a, a you know razor sharp point sticking up, blow out tires and stuff. Hey, I ain't condoning it. Just saying, in an apocalypse, might be a good thing to have in your car. What else we have here? <laughs> the ultimate drone defense. Look at that. So you have a 12 gauge rounds that shoots this uh, <coughs> this. This uh, projectile that captures drones, or I guess, or at least damages them so they fall to the ground. That's pretty cool. I I've never experienced a drone going over my house, but if there was a drone going over private property that was, I can't do it where I am now, where I currently live, because um, I can't, you know, fire a weapon in here. However, um, if uh, if I ever did see a drone over the house like that, that's a pretty cool way to take it down. And then guess what? You got a drone, uh, but you don't have the uh, you don't have the remote, so I guess you can't use it. And I guess it'd probably break on the way down too. That's uh, it's interesting. Is that are drones that much of a problem that people need to shoot them down? I don't know. I don't know how that works really. Like like legally speaking, who owns airspace and stuff? I mean, if you have a drone, you're going over the township. That's one thing. But you know what prevents people from just you know bringing that drone down to the backyard? You know, looking in people's windows in their house. I don't know. I don't know. I'm sure this stuff happens all the time. I don't know. I guess the law has to change as technology changes, right? I don't know if there's specific drone laws yet. You guys might know more about that. You can tell me about it. Let's see. Good, uh, good foldable shovel. I actually just recently got a SOG uh, shovel like this for winter. So you guys will definitely see that in the future. Stay tuned. These things are super cool. Oh man, you know I saw I saw. Um, uh, crazy Russian hacker. All right, he did a video on these these uh, grenades or flashbangs, as they're called. Basically, they're a CO2 cartridge, okay, and it works like a real grenade, where you have a safety pin, you pull, you squeeze in your handle, and when you let go, what happens when you squeeze in? It pierces the top of the, the cartridge, and when you let go, it allows the plastic, uh, you know, grenade part to fill up, and eventually, there's too much pressure and it explodes. You don't have all that much time though, it's only a few seconds, so check out his video, you've probably seen it, he gets millions of views on his videos, so not many people miss out on that kind of stuff, but if you have not seen it, definitely worth checking out. Uh, super cool. Uh, if I was 13 again, I'd, I'd have this, I would be definitely playing with that. As an adult, I get it, I lived it through his video, so that, it's not that exciting anymore, but um, it's a pretty cool concept, very, very cool, and I would imagine even cooler for like maybe um, people who do paintballing or like... Um, you know, uh, war reenactment. I guess no one really reenacts like Vietnam. <laughs> Most war, I guess all war reenactors are really just like Civil War and Revolutionary War and like historical stuff like that. That's that's weird. I don't know. Does anyone do that? Do people do reenactments of uh, the Vietnam War? That would be really interesting. That should be a thing. If that's not already a thing, that should definitely be a thing. Let's see, keychain lighter. It's uh, definitely cool. Their permanent match is what I see them sold as for three bucks. That is a hell of a lot of fun. And also another good uh, additive to your uh, survival kits because there is a little O-ring on this stem part. So you put your lighter fuel in here, or lighter fluid, 
and uh, it actually holds in there for a very, very long time because it's not evaporating like you would in, say, a Zippo. These are a lot of fun, the pull string alarms or firecrackers, essentially. I used to always put these in the doorways until my, uh, my parents used to get pissed and yelled at me because <laughs> it would always startle them. So that was short-lived, but uh, yeah, that's, uh, that's that catalog. Let's see if we can find something in here. Well, right off the bat, look at that. The bear claw. I mean, pretty much everything in here is the same, but I know I saw those. There we go. So $12.99. $12.99. I don't know if you guys saw that. All right, $12.99 in Bud K. And what was this called? CH Cadells? CH Cadells. All right. Also $12.99. Telling you, same crap. This little trench knife. I'm sure, we can find that in here. It's just everything's just jumbled. You know, it's just it's just mixed up. But it is all the same, same stuff. Well, I'm sure, it's in there somewhere. But I just saw this. Is the AR 80% lower jig? Where see that? Where's the back here? It's all the same crap, I'm telling you. No, that's the pistol jig. Well, I might take my word for it, but I'm telling you. If you, if you really kind of took the time to compare both, you would see it is all the same stuff. It's just in, uh, you know, on different pages and next to different items. I know it's all in here. Like ninety percent the same. Maybe you get lucky and you find something new in the one that you didn't see in the other. Here it is. All right, eighty percent AR fifteen lowers jig kit seventy nine ninety nine. It's even the same page, bottom left. Seventy nine ninety nine. All right, so the prices are the same. It looks like it's not like they're trying to show some kind of uh, you know competitive uh, competitive pricing or anything. So anyway, there you go. There's my uh, my walkthrough, Bud K and uh, CH Cadell's. Eh, some of it's crap, some of it's fun. Some of it's really worth it. Some of it's a, a bargain. Um, most of the stuff you'll see in these catalogs, you will not find cheaper, you know? There's always exceptions or certain things you'll find here. Yeah, okay, I can find a better price on Amazon or I can find a better price on eBay or whatever, uh, or certain knife dealers or whatever. Knives, uh, for better quality knives, definitely, do not go with these companies. Cheap knives, yeah, yeah, definitely. Because they're competitive with the cheap stuff from China. But like, sometimes when you find an actual quality name brand knife in here, more times than not, you'll find it cheaper elsewhere. So, I mean, you should price shop no matter what you're buying or where you're looking. You should always, you know, try to find it cheaper anyway. But, um, yeah, just uh, interesting. Uh, so if you didn't know, it is the same company. So if you happen to get both of these publications, and they're both free, by the way, too. So if you want something to look at while you're in the bathroom uh, or killing time, who knows, sitting in a waiting room, it's a good thing. Sometimes that's all literally when I get one of these or if I get like a Smoky Mountain Knife Works catalog or something, I won't look at it and I will save it. And I have to go to a doctor's appointment, dentist appointment. Um, who knows? If I know I'm going to be waiting somewhere or even if I'm, like, if I'm going to the store and I don't want to go in and my wife's going in somewhere, I'll sit in the car and look at this or I'll sit in a waiting room and look at this. So I'll save that, those uh, catalogs specifically for those times. So anyway, just a, a quick walk through these catalogs. They always have some interesting things. You know, when I was 13, everything in here I wanted. Uh, everything was cool and amazing and, oh, I gotta get this and that's gonna be fun and I can't wait to show my friend this and blah, blah, blah. As an adult, I have, certainly have a different approach, but, you know, I still have that, that youngster in me that wants to just, you know, try a lot of this crap out. Um, none of this is really, like, it's mostly novelty, it's mostly fun. But there is some practical items in here that actually could be really useful and some tools you can, you know, store for emergencies and stuff like that. Um, but anyway, it's entertainment at the very least. And uh, I like looking through these and I figured I'd uh, I kind of flip through for you guys, for all the people out there that don't get this. But it is free. Um, but unfortunately, like I said, it's only in the U.S. Uh, but you can go to either one of these websites and get their free catalogs. And just like I said, it's a good, uh, good way to waste some time. And who knows, maybe find something cool you want to buy. So there you go. 
Thanks for watching, guys. Hope you have a great day, and I'll see you soon. Take care.